Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice California final webinar before our uh, really exciting historic March, September 8th. Uh, we are 10 days, 10 days away from the largest mobilization around climate justice the West Coast has ever seen. And uh, we can't wait to dig in with you, uh, to lay out some logistics tonight, lay out some personal stories of why folks are coming, and then uh, answer some of your questions uh, and get everybody revved up and ready to go for what's going to be a beautiful, powerful, and important day. So my name is Pete Wywoody. I'm on staff with RISE uh, California, Climate Jobs and Justice. And I'm here in Oakland, uh, just across the bay from where we're going to be marching in 10 short days. And tonight, we're going to hear from Juan Flores from the Central Valley, Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment, and uh, Adelita from Mothers Out Front, who's coming to us from Yolo County, uh, Jack Fleck from 350 Bay Area here in the Bay, as well as David Solnit and the Peace Poets, who are uh, going to be leading our art and music. Uh, and this is, this is not your average march. We are going to have a really powerful art and music program uh, uh, during the course of our march on September 8th. So uh, we'll let, give a little while as folks come in, please. Uh, Put where you're calling in from in the chat so we can see the breadth of where folks are coming from, uh, from all across California and the region. We know that there are already buses coming from Ventura and Ukiah and uh, uh, the Central Valley and uh, other places all around uh, the state. We're seeing Yolo County in the chat, Gilroy um, from Sacramento. And so please continue to put where you're coming from in the chat and uh, so we can get a sense of who all is joining us. Um, so a little brief uh, idea of what we're going to do on the agenda tonight. Um, we are going to first talk about uh, why uh, many of us are uh, rising. And you'll hear from Juan and Adelita about uh, the communities that they come from and why they're coming to San Francisco in this uh, lead up to the Global Climate Action Summit and how important RISE is to moving their issues forward for their communities and all communities. And then we're going to hear about the specifics of what is going to happen on the day of. And Jack, is, who's been working for months to get us all aligned and make sure that we're all in the right spots, uh, is going to walk us through some of the logistics of the actual day. So uh, uh, have your pens and pencils out and take notes on uh, where, where you're going to land, when you can get resources, etc. And then we're going to hear about the uh, art and culture of uh, what's going to be happening that day again. We're going to paint the largest street mural of all time in San Francisco. That, that there, there will never have been more beautiful artwork on the ground in a street mural than we will see in 10 days in San Francisco. And we're also going to have beautiful songs, uh, train, trained song facilitators that are going to be dispersed throughout the march. And you'll hear all about that over the course of the call this and month. Then we're going to uh, close out and answer any of your questions, uh, if you have any, and uh, it will be posting those in the chat, and so we can answer uh, all of the logistical and other questions that you've got to make sure that everybody can get here, tell their friends to get here, tell their family to get here, tell their elected leaders to get here, tell everybody to get here in, uh, to the Bay Area, San Francisco, on September 8th. So uh, let's start, and hopefully folks are still coming in. I've seen the Santa Clara is coming. Look at that, the bus from Chico is full, which is really exciting. We've got folks from Kern County. So continue to put in the chat where you're coming from. And um, got just a couple more minutes to make sure that folks all arrive. But thank you all for joining us this evening. Now, um, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Juan, who's gonna lead, uh, who's gonna tell us about why he and folks Kern County are coming to rise for climate jobs and justice in San Francisco. So this is Juan Flores, a dynamic activist and organizer from the Central Valley, um, living in Kern County, where they've just won some really exciting wins, stopping fossil fuel infrastructure in the valley. And uh, Juan is uh, leading one of our buses coming from the Central Valley. And I'll to turn it over to Juan to hear um, what, what's that? Yeah. Hi, hi, Pete, uh, and thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I made myself some notes, uh, so bear with me to make sure that I give you all the information I want to give you. Uh, 
So just, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, but just to give you a little bit of uh, context and a little bit of background, uh, Governor Brown, a while back, called for this Global Climate Summit, right? Where literally he's self-proclaiming himself as a climate leader. Like, like nobody else has like come out and said, oh, he's a climate leader, other than him and his administration. Uh, so on September 8th, for at least the residents of Kern County, as I'm pretty sure for everybody else that is going to be in San Francisco, it's important that we are there, that the frontline communities are there to actually show him, Governor Brown, what actual climate leaders look like and what they're fighting for and what they can achieve together. So that's number one reason why we're attending, why our community members want to be there. Um, Rice for Climate Jobs and Justice uh, California is the anchor event for a global date of action in San Francisco, where everything is, San Francisco, that date is going to be the, the nucleus of what's happening right now with our movement and with our fight against fossil fuel. Uh, so it is very important that every community through the state of California understand this, that it is San Francisco the place to be on September 8th because that's where media is going to be present. That's where even other dignitaries from other countries are gonna be looking at, given that people are gonna come out and proud Brown for his lack of action. So it is very important that we unite ourselves in that front and that we actually show up the day uh, on September 8th, right there in San Francisco. Rise for climate jobs and justice. That's what we wanna make sure that, we, uh, that, that we're there for. Uh, RISE is a container for diverse communities, campaigns, and issues to come together. That's what is actually holding us together. You're going to see a lot of, uh, of different residents, a lot of different organizations that are going to be coming together that data specifically uh, to unite ourselves in one single voice. Uh, and you're going to hear for, from other uh, speakers tonight that we all come from different backgrounds, but asking one single thing, which is justice and fairness for our communities. Those same communities that for many decades have been left behind in, in the front of every single issue. It's always these communities that suffer. And that they so I think our, our main reason as well, besides what I just mentioned for residents of Kern County to go and to be present on September 8th, it's three of them. Uh, we are fighting for economic and racial justice. Uh, Low-income communities and communities of color have always been left behind when it comes to a fair transition to something new and to something better. This time, and it's starting right around September 8th, these same communities are leading the way. These frontline communities are becoming the leaders of a new and just transition that can make us fossil, free, uh, fossil fuel free uh, pretty soon, uh, at least within the next two to three decades. That's what they have on their mind. The other part is that they're fighting extraction. Kern County uh, is the second county at the national level on extraction of oil. Just one county in Texas extracts more oil than we do here in California, uh, in this county alone. So these communities have gotten to know and to name the, the oil industry an invasive uh, economy because they think that with their money, they can buy their way in into these communities, extract their natural resources, and leave empty handed the communities exploding. Perhaps the only thing that they're leaving behind are health issues, uh, a land that cannot be used at least in the next 200 years before we can take out all the contamination and be able to plant something. So they're fighting this extractive uh, economy, and they want an economy that is that is green, that is sustainable, and that is inclusive. And that has the frontline communities as the beginning of that economy. And, and for Kern County, that's very important. Uh, the, the other thing is pushing forward the solutions of our communities that, that, are, that our communities deserve. They're really, really thinking about turning and, and asking Governor Brown, make California a true state that runs on sustainable energy. Let's, let's walk the talk. Let's not just say it. Let's just not speed out words. Let's actually put concrete actions that can take us there. 
And they're also taking one message that is very important to us. In this invasive economy, it is very, very important that Governor Brown takes into consideration science and the reports that his own scientists have given him. And that is that we need, at the very least, a 2,500 feet buffer zone between oil wells and sensitive areas like schools, markets, churches, parks, clinics, hospitals. If you have had the opportunity to go to LA perhaps or to Bakersfield in Kern County, you can notice that you can be treated in a clinic and just within a hundred feet from there, you can have up to two or three oil wells that are extracting oil. Uh, that's inconceivable on a state that likes to proclaim itself as the most progressive state of the nation. That is inconceivable on a state where a governor likes to call and, and, and make himself a climate leader. That, that is so realistic. That, so that is really important why uh, our communities are coming to September 8th. Now, rice is not part of the Global Climate Summit. Uh, I think we need to make that distinction. We're not at any moment participating on anything that the governor uh, is calling for, whether our panels or activities. What we are doing though, it's we are hosting our own panels, our own activities, leading towards and during the week of uh, the Global Climate Summit. So we invite you all, uh, pretty soon you're gonna see a calendar on your screens. Uh, those are the different events that RISE is going to be having. And I'm truly inviting everyone to join and to be part of these events. Uh, like I said, the eyes of the world are gonna be in San Francisco. They're gonna be on our state and they need to see that people are fighting back into the ground. So I think that, that these are the main reasons why uh, on September 8th, over 100 residents from Kern County are traveling. Some of them are leaving from Friday. Some of them are waking up at one o'clock in the morning to get ready and travel at 3.30 in the morning to be there, to march, and to fight for the things that they believe. And, uh, and I would like to invite everyone to, to share as well the message of Kern County residents because it is something that affects everyone. Uh, I know it happens in Kern County, but pollution, oil extraction travels through our whole state and we need to come united. We have to come as one to have our voices finally be heard and to have real solutions that are gonna have truthful and meaningful impacts in our communities. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Juan. Uh, so excited that you and your uh, compatriots from Kern County are going to be with us. Um, I am certainly moved, and uh, and I think that this uh, speaks so well to what's really at stake. It's not uh, uh, marching is a, a good and beautiful thing, and we will do uh, big and beautiful things, but this is people's lives who are in the balance, and the biggest impact that we can make on September 8th to have our elected officials, to have Governor Brown, to have other uh, um, business leaders and elected leaders hear us and hear the voices of Juan and his community and others. Um, thank you so much. And, uh, Juan's gonna have to leave us shortly, but if you have questions for him, put them in the chat and we'll, we uh, can reach out to him and, uh, and get answers uh, from the Center for Race, Poverty and the Environment. So um, I wanna turn us now and, uh, to our second speaker, um, who is uh, Adelita Serena from uh, Mothers Out Front, um, which is a phenomenal organization uh, making the connections about uh, our children are at risk uh, and uh, who is going to stand in the way of uh, the, the captains of industry, the, the uh, politicians that aren't standing up for us, um, but who else other than mothers? And so uh, uh, um, Adelita is in Yolo County and uh, leading a bus down here to the Bay Area on September 8th. So I'll turn it over to Adelita to tell about the work that they're doing and uh, the experience of getting, jumping on a bus. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Juan, for your um, part in explaining what Kern County is doing. Uh, we're Mothers Out Front, a grassroots movement of mothers and allies uh, mobilizing for a livable climate for our kids. I mean, as a mom, I am directly impacted. My kids are directly impacted by climate change every day. Um, the reason 
I started to engage with Mothers Out Front is because um, I have a son in football and he has been an athlete for many years. Uh, he's 16 years old, he's in high school. And um, I had to watch him at an early age, like uh, train during the summer for football. And I'm talking all year long uh, in extreme heat, you know, here in Woodland, uh, in Yolo County, we've got triple digits and they just, it, every summer just keeps getting hotter. And then now with the fires, um, he's breathing in particulate matter uh, in, in the peak heat hours, the athletes train usually between 2.30 to 6 p.m. And so my son um, uh, has to be out there breathing, uh, you know, heavy, thick particulate matter in triple digit heat. He's 16. His lungs are still developing. And so this is not, I'm not alone in this. Other mothers were out there were like, why aren't they modifying the schedules? And I'd approach the coaches and the coaches don't want mothers to step forward to interrupt, you know, their practice schedule. Their main focus is winning. And so I'm not alone uh, when I talk on behalf of mothers and our children desire to be outdoors. And so <laughs> I get emotional. So I apologize. Um, Powerful stuff. Thank you, Adelita. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, we are, we're stepping forward and organizing other mothers uh, that care just as much about the health and the health impacts facing our children. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm talking to mothers, uh, groups of mothers that uh, live in rural areas here that don't necessarily have the same kind of access as um, folks in the bigger cities have. So I'm doing outreach to rural communities, uh, Knights Landing, uh, here in Woodland, Davis. These are agriculture communities. Um, the only thing that I am noticing here is that um, the parents want to be involved. I've actually uh, received over 80 RSVPs for our bus. I actually have one bus and a mini coach and they're both full now. And um, we're talking, you know, this is all uh, diverse uh, Spanish speaking and people of color that I'm filling this bus with. Um, some of them are being challenged by the season at this point. It is uh, harvest season here in Yolo County. We've got all of the fields. Um, they're being, you know, they're, it's, it's, it's harvest time. It's 24 seven around here. We're talking about the canneries, they're open 24 seven. So some of those families there are not able to participate but are sending representatives. So um, that's currently been my experience with the more rural areas. I've also done outreach to um, the community college here. Um, I've been able to partner with the ethnic studies department and I've done outreach to the Chicano studies class, the Native American studies class and the history of race class and um, they're all excited to um, participate. Um, so I've got a diverse population coming, we've got families, we've got mothers, we've got students. Um, and I've been able to talk about the RISE March and as well as like SB 100. Yesterday was obviously a very busy day during presentations. I was like, call in, call in to, you know, your assembly member and actually, um, our, our assembly woman is Cecilia uh, Aguilar Curry, um, and she actually um, was not in support of SB 100, and so we had all the students call, and so it, yesterday was a big day for California and for, you know, SB 100. Obviously, y'all heard about, you know, the win yesterday, just waiting for Governor Brown to sign that, and so that's what we're all passionate about. We're all passionate about a healthy future for our children, um, you know, whatever steps we need to take to support and advocate uh, the efforts being made by our assembly folks, uh, we're going to go and we're going to show up and they can't ignore us when it's a group of moms that are prepared and, you know, we're, we're educated on the matters at hand. They really can't turn away from us. It's really, uh, we present a different uh, force. And um, as women, 
and we, you know, historically, when we get together, we can make change. You know, we, we were not allowed to vote just a short time ago, and we made that change for ourselves. So uh, just being able to tell those stories of um, women having success by uniting, mothers coming together, and for this purpose, I, we've been able to um, really mobilize the mothers in this area. So like I said, I've, I've been able to RSVP over 80 folks in less than a month to get on the bus and um, get to San Francisco on the 8th. So um, we, we are planning some you know, things for children as well, like face painting. Um, hopefully we could get a mural down. I, we, we know that we're coming in like probably right around, we're trying to get there at 9.30 or 10, but um, so we're, our, we're really trying to make things um, happen in a timely fashion on, on our end as well. So um, I, I, I don't know what else to share, but that's been kind of what I've been doing over here. Um, you know, all of us are impacted by the fires here. So we're seeing it firsthand. Our kids are, are, are having their limited, um, you know, limited access to the outdoors because of it. And so that's really affecting us. So um, that's where we're coming from. That's been our experience. And, and that's why we're, we're rallying folks to go. Wow, yeah, thank you so much, Adelita. Um, a powerful story from two directions, powerful about the terrible impacts our children are facing and, and that uh, more and more people are going to face day to day. And then a powerful story about how to respond and, um, and bringing your community, uh, filling up two buses, um, uh, bringing folks who are feeling the effects of this uh, first and worst, uh, low-income people, people of color, uh, people in low-income jobs, farm workers, rural areas, and uh, really stepping to the plate and saying, okay, Governor Brown, people in power, this is unacceptable. Uh, our children deserve better. Our future deserves better. So thank you so much for all you're doing, Adelita. Um, so uh, let's move along now. You've heard from Juan and heard from Adelita about the exciting uh, reasons why we want to rise. And now uh, we're going to hear about uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, go for it. Can you, can you talk a little bit about partners? Because we've got a couple of slides that we want to show people just about the who's partnering. Sure, yeah. So uh, folks know that we have, uh, uh, this is a day oh, of, can you hear me? Yeah, Jack, yeah, hold on just one second. We'll go to Jack in just a second. Um, uh, we're we're going to say, we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the broad coalition that is Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice in California. So you can see on the screen now, we have over 300 organizations from across the state that are, and the region that have signed on to support this march from labor, faith, uh, youth organizations, um, uh, climate organizations, of course, uh, and everything in between, arts organizations. Uh, we also, uh, this is one piece of a global and national day of action with 535 actions that are happening around the world so far and uh, many actions in uh, various parts of this country. And we are the anchor action. People are pointing to us across the world and across the nation to be the front post of, uh, uh, and, and the sort of centerpiece of all, all of this activity. So uh, if you're part of an organization you haven't sponsored yet, please go to the website, ca.riseforclimate.org and uh, you can see on there how to join uh, an organizing group. Uh, Juan is part of the environmental justice group and uh, Alita is part of the uh, families and children's group and that's uh, and we'll talk about uh, how folks are going to line up and uh, and how they're going to march uh, just now. So I'm going to turn it over to you can see on your screen also we want folks to join the slack um, if you uh, uh, so we'll send out an email with all of the resources from this uh, um, uh, uh, from this webinar, including signing up for our Slack team, uh, signing up for the text loops, and, uh, and getting your organizations and individuals signed up to, to join us on September 8th. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jack uh, to do some of the nuts and bolts of what's actually going to happen on September 8th when Adelita comes from Yolo County and Juan comes from Kern County. They arrive in San Francisco. And then what happens, Jack? Mm. Wow, we're really excited. That was fantastic about Kern County and Yolo, those buses. And um, so the buses will have an easy place to park. We worked it out with the uh, San Francisco authorities and just like a block away from the main gathering place. So that should go smoothly. Now, if you are able to come in on Friday night, uh, we definitely urge you to take uh, public transit, BART or Muni. 
and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about some things going on Friday night to encourage you. But coming in Saturday uh, on the bus is great, and there'll be a pickup spot near Civic Center where the march ends. So that should work out really nice to uh, just come in on a bus and, and take off when you're all ready to do that. Uh, to run down the schedule, the uh, interfaith service has got to be 915. That's uh, organized by, a, I think we have like 50 some congregations involved in that. And uh, then the contingents are supposed to gather at 10 a.m. That's what we're telling people, but uh, some people are getting there earlier because they want to grab a certain spot on the street. And I'm a little uh, unsure about where these two contingents that you just talked about, the Kern County and the Yolo one, uh, would meet. Maybe Pete, you can help them figure that out. But uh, do we put up the screen grab of the lineup here? Uh, there's a f the first contingent is indigenous is going to be led by indigenous people, but it's also going to include some of the frontline communities and. Uh, environmental justice groups. So I think both of you could fit into that. On the other hand, there's another group that is focused on families. So Adelita, I'm sure you could go into either one of those. People kind of need to self-identify to some extent. Um, the second contingent, the second number two there is gonna have youth. It's gonna have uh, a women's contingent, an elders contingent, and a very big labor contingent. So those are all self-identified groups. And the, the areas three and four are a little bit more um, open. Most of the people are gonna be in those. That's gonna be out in Embarcadero Plaza, which is a big gathering area. There's gonna be some singing starting at 10.30, and there's gonna be a big event uh, where we all do a unifying uh, action together and a song uh, right at 11 o'clock. I think there's gonna be a little bit more talking about that in a minute. Um, at the very end of the march, when all the marchers are finished, we have two more contingents. One is a bicycle contingent, whoever wants to ride their bike in the parade or in the march can do that. And we also have electric vehicles. People who have electric vehicles can um, offer rides to anybody who gets a little tired and doesn't want to keep marching. So that's another uh, plus in addition to the idea that electric vehicles are part of the solution. We need to get off of fossil fuels. And we're also having a few taxi, a couple taxi drivers in San Francisco who are uh, waging a, a part of the labor contingent in a sense. Uh, so we're going to go straight down um, Market Street all the way to Civic Center. And uh, at Civic Center, there's sort of two things happening. One is a resource fair. We've invited all our uh, partners to uh, have tables and provide literature. And they can have little mini speakers and try to advocate for their uh, causes and let inform people of what's going on. And then I think the most fun thing uh, is going to be the mural project. And David can talk about that in a minute, but it's uh, it's going to be really incredible. And that's going to be a really fantastic thing with everybody getting a paintbrush and uh, going at it to be part of this mural project. Um, and that uh, is actually going to be chalked out earlier in the morning so that by the time the marchers get there, all you have to do is grab your paintbrush and start filling it in. So uh, hopefully that'll all come together right at the right time. And um, at 2 p.m. also in Civic Center, there will be a, a unifying moment similar to what I mentioned about 11 a.m. right before the march starts. So uh, kind of synchronize your watches and look for these events because we have a bigger sound system at uh, Civic Center, but at the, in the morning at 11 a.m. or 10.50, it's just gonna be, uh, mic check kind of thing. So everybody stay tuned and try to be part of that. And the event should be over by five o'clock. The, the buses should be picking people up at uh, 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, a few words on disability access. If you have people in your group that need accommodations, let us know. We'll try to make sure we address that. We will have uh, American Sign Language near the stage in the morning. But again, there's not really an assembly with speakers and that kind of thing, but it would be a person that can help translate the uh, songs that we're doing and answer questions that people have. And uh, as far as people have mobility issues, if they have a wheelchair that can make it through the parade, that's great. If they need a push, that could work too. Uh, the, like I said, the electric vehicles at the end of the parade can give people a ride if they're getting uh, kind of tired and don't feel like walking. And then Actually, the parade goes straight up Market Street. And if you're familiar with San Francisco, you know that there's a BART track right underneath the street there. There's also a Muni, a Muni Metro track, and those are all wheelchair accessible. So uh, people that just want to meet and then take the Muni or the BART up to Civic Center, that's all accessible. We will also have a couple ambulances on standby in case anybody uh, has, a, has an emergency, uh, we'll be prepared. I, I want to say a couple things about Friday night and Sunday morning. 
If you are able to come in Friday night, that would be fantastic. We've, rec we've rented the Oakland Museum Cafe, and uh, the Oakland Museum is really a great institution in, um, in downtown Oakland. It's only a block from the Lake Merritt BART station, very accessible. And every Friday night, they have uh, Friday nights at the museum where they have food trucks, they have bands, they have uh, lots of uh, partying going on. And we've run, rented the cafe we're, we're from 6 to 9 p.m. It's going to be a great chance for everybody coming in from around the state to get acquainted. Uh, Patrick from 350.org is going to MC and help uh, do some icebreakers so we get to know each other. So I encourage everybody on this call to, uh, if you're able to come in on Friday night, please do so. And we're gonna have a couple guests. Uh, I understand Bill McKibben's gonna stop by and, and May Booby. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. We've got some songs planned and uh, uh, maybe a skit or two. So I uh, hope you can make it to that event at, uh, at the Oakland Museum. Sunday morning, we're also having a workshop. We wanna take advantage of this whole uh, rise event because people are coming from around the state and uh, we want to try to do the best we can to bring that group together to collaborate on strategies so uh, we're trying to get everybody that's coming from 350 groups around the state to uh, who can stick around on Sunday morning and uh, have a little strategy session uh, there's a slide I think with Nan's uh, Nan Farley has the details as the person to contact so uh, I think I'll stop there and um, Feel free to ask questions. Great, thank you so much, Jack. As you can hear, a lot going on, but also a lot of really great planning has gone in to make this happen. And Jack's been a huge part of that from the beginning. And a big thanks to him and all the team uh, making the logistics happen. It's hard to, to move tens of thousands of people from one place to the other and then throw in some songs and throw in some murals and it gets even harder. So thanks everybody for uh, putting all that time in. If you have questions, Start to put them in the chat. We'll start to address them at the later uh, later part of the agenda. So please feel free to um, put uh, your questions in the chat and we'll come around to addressing them in a second. But I've got a question for you, uh, eager to hear how you all can plug in to volunteering. And uh, obviously it takes a lot to get that thousands of people in the street. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Josephine now, who's gonna step in and talk about uh, our volunteer squad that can make the biggest, safest, most eloquent, uh, most beautiful march that we've ever seen. So this is Josephine, our volunteer coordinator. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, so great to be with you all tonight. Super energized um, on this call already. So yes, I'm Josephine, I'm the volunteer coordinator. Um, can you go to the next slide? Thanks. So yeah, as Pete was saying, it's going to take all of us to pull off this really incredible march. There's a lot of logistical pieces that need to come together and we'll be working with thousands of people in the streets and we want to make sure the march flows really well, that people know where to queue up and, um, and uh, you know, which contingent to be a part of and, and that the mural um, goes off really perfectly as well. Can you go to the next slide? So I wanted to talk to you all. We are um, asking you all to please sign up to volunteer on our website. So there's um, volunteer opportunities both on the day of the march as well as um, in advance of the march. Um, and there are remote opportunities uh, in advance of the march too, which I can talk about in a second. But I wanted to show you this screen capture is the um, step one in signing up to volunteer. So we just need some of your contact information. And this is all on the website. Do you mind going to the next? And um, here are all of the opportunities to volunteer um, in advance of the march. Um, and actually at the top of the screen, sorry, I'm moving my chat box around a little bit, but at the top of the screen, there are, um, there's a whole list of volunteer trainings. Um, and if you wanted to, uh, if you're able to volunteer on the day of the march, we also have a remote training option, um, which will be up uh, on the website later on um, by the end of this week at the latest. Um, so we'd ask that you sign up for one of those trainings so we can plug you into the roles. So we're gonna be able to go over all of the logistical considerations and determine what role is, is best for each of you. Um, through that training process. Uh, and we also have volunteer opportunities um, in advance of the march. We are going to all of these events you can see below the under outreach. Um, can you, yeah. 
No, can you go back? Yeah. So if you have the mouse, can you just sort of oh. Can they see? Yeah. yeah. Any any one of these yeah. buttons yes. will lead you to um, uh, an outreach opportunity that's happening locally. And then at the bottom right of the screen, there's remote opportunities, which is phone and text banking. And that is ongoing. And we always need um, support in that way. Um, so you can sign up for any of these on our website and we will follow up with you. Can you go to the next? Line, please. Yeah, so some of the rules that we need for day of volunteers, we need marshals, that's people who help ensure the flow of the march. Uh, we need greeters, people to direct folks when they are coming off of BART or off of the buses um, to know where to line up and how to make sure they get all of the gorgeous art that's been prepped for them. We're also looking for people with really specific skill sets like medics, uh, nurses, doctors, and also social workers. Um, so if you have that special skill, I would love to hear from you. Um, art wranglers are folks that will help ensure that the um, art makes it to all of the different contingents. Um, and then also accessibility uh, folks to make sure that, that the market is as accessible as possible. So those are some of the day of volunteer roles. And the trainings are listed here um, for people that can come in advance. Um, there's a training as late as next Thursday. So if you're already in town, that would be great to join then. But we are planning a remote training, um, at least one, to happen via something very similar to this, like a Zoom call uh, next Wednesday from 12 to 1.30. And I think we should also, we'll also schedule a Wednesday evening um, remote training option um, and so please sign up for one of those um, they'll go live on the website very soon after this call um, and yeah it's gonna take all of us to to really make this event as as successful as it can be and to to do everything that we want to do um, and we're, we're looking for people who you don't need to have a lot of experience um, people who can be really friendly and uh, it's the volunteers and sort of like the way that we we interact with folks that really determines like how people experience the the march and the day so we're um, really looking to to put together a really good team of volunteers and we hope you'll you'll join us and be one of them can you go to the next Slide. Yeah, so this is the website uh, link for where to sign up for all of the volunteer opportunities, ca.riseforclimate.org slash volunteer. And then I've also included my email address, which is josephine at peoplesclimate.org. If you have any specific questions um, about uh, remote trainings or anything like that, please be in touch. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks so much, Josephine. And thank you all in advance for signing up to volunteer. And, you know, we can't, these mobilizations can't happen without lots of people throwing down in many different roles. So um, real quickly, just a couple of notes. Do go to that website. There's a whole lot of your questions can be answered on the website. I'm glad to see folks are putting questions in the chat. We'll get those to those in a second. I uh, also want to encourage folks to text RISE, our RSVP at the website. Also want to encourage folks to text uh, RISE CA to 83224 to get more updates and be looped in that way and uh, post on social media. The hashtags we're using are uh, RISE for Climate and Climate Jobs Justice. And so now I'm going to turn it over. You've heard a lot about the mural, heard a lot about the songs that we're going to be doing. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to the folks who've making all that happen. Uh, David Solnit and the Peace Poet, Emmanuel, Boo, and Frankie are going to join us and tell us what are we gonna do? Uh, what are the most beautiful parts of the day gonna look like? So David and poet folk, bring it on. So I'll start talking a little bit about the climate justice mural projects. The question, uh, what are the solutions to climate change and injustice in our communities? We know what the solutions are and 50 communities and organizations are gonna paint those solutions on the ground 35 feet wide, ringing uh, Civic Center Plaza and on Fulton Street. And, uh, 
And as those are being uh, painted, there will also be an Ohlone-inspired design along the, uh, the edge of all the streets, and the streets will be completely painted. Uh, we're using clay and tempera, washable paint, and there's a Bay Area tradition when we have a crisis, whether it's foreclosure, solidarity with Standing Rock, our refineries poisoning our communities, of taking the streets and painting them. And at 9 a.m. on September 8th, the Society of Fearless Grandmothers, led by grandmothers from uh, Idle No More, are gonna be helping us take those streets well, folks are marching. We're going to, uh, the 50 different mural teams are going to be laying out all those murals and the border design. And so when the march arrives, we need 5,000 people to paint the streets and with us. And those who aren't painting will be singing. So maybe we can hear about that part. And uh, if folks have inquiries or want to get involved, just send an email to Climate Justice Street Murals at gmail.com. Great, thanks, thanks, David. Now, yeah, peace poets, please. <laughs> peace, family. Uh, we are three of the five peace poets. We are coming from the Bronx, New York, and we're here in the Bay Area getting ready to rise with you. And uh, we're super hyped to be here. The first thing we want to do is tell you about the unifying moments that we're going to have together. So I want you to imagine tens of thousands of us gathered at the beginning of the day. And then momentum is building. And then you're going to hear around 1050, over 30 choirs burst out into beautiful music, singing together. And they're going to be calling us into a moment that we're calling a unifying moment that is happening exactly at 11 a.m. At 11 a.m., you will see visual cues of flags that say, remember. And you will have a whole squad of song leaders guiding you in collective action to go down to the ground. So at 11 a.m., we will go down to the ground saying the word remember. We'll touch the ground to remember all those who have been lost to climate chaos, and all of those who can be with us in that moment, and also to remember our connection to the earth. And so together, again, imagining all those thousands of people in that moment, we're gonna be silent for two minutes. In a big collective ritual, and after two minutes at 11.02, that group of song leaders, with the help of visual cues, are going to begin singing a song called The Voice of My Great Granddaughter. And all of us together will slowly, powerfully rise as we sing this song together. So that is our first unifying moment. And right after that, the march will begin with the indigenous contingent singing the Women Warriors song, and the march will be kicked off. That will be a little bit of a rehearsal for the second unifying moment will be essentially exactly the same. But the second time we do it, we'll be gathered all around our solutions, painted beautifully on the ground around the Civic Center. And when the people step back from the murals at 2 p.m., you'll see the flags saying, remember, we will go down again, saying, remember, to touch the earth, and again, be silent for two minutes for that collective ritual. And after two minutes, we'll rise up singing that same song. And it's a song that we want to sing for you now. It's a song that calls upon the indigenous wisdom of making all of our decisions based on what's best, not just for this moment, but for all the future generations. And we're really excited, before we teach you the song, to, to say this collective ritual is very much in contrast to the system that is trying to continually distract us and persuade us to participate in the destruction of our communities and our planet. So this collective ritual that we're inviting you into, we want you 
to get hype about inviting your friends and your families to say it. it's going to be amazing. Thousands of people being quiet together to remember those we've lost and our connection to the earth. So those are the two unifying moments. We can't wait to do that with you. And we'd like to share a song with you, the very song that we're going to sing when we rise back up together in both of those moments. Cool. It's a little weird to teach you in a webinar. So we're just going to sing it. And wherever you are, we are rock with us. Please do. Absolutely. Jack's going to sing too. There you go. It's kind of a timing thing. You just sing and have fun. It goes like the bo 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 Come on here now. So you can, you can unmute yourself over there. <laughs> okay, it goes like this. First, I'm going to say the words. The people going to rise like the water. We're going to calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter singing, keep it in the ground. Goes like this. The people going to rise like the water, we going to calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, keep it in the ground. The people going to rise like the water, we going to calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, keep it in the ground. The people gonna rise like the water. We gonna calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Keep it in the." Imagine us taking the streets. The people gonna rise like the water. We gonna calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Keep it in the ground." One time now. The people gonna rise out the water. We gonna calm this crisis down. Sing that. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, "Keep it in the ground." Whew. Wow! Thank you. Um, that is the most exciting webinar moment I've had in a real long time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, peace poets. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, so you. You can all imagine how that's gonna, that felt powerful with just the 10 of us that you can see on screen. Imagine what that's gonna feel like in the streets with tens of thousands of people after we're silent and then we rise up in song, really professing what we should, what the world needs to hear. But to hear voices of our great granddaughters saying, keep it in the ground and move us to a different economy, a different future. So you've heard a lot tonight. You've heard from Juan and Adelita about uh, all of the important reasons that they are rising up and coming from other parts of California. You've heard from Jack about all the uh, different logistical details of the day. You've heard from Jocelyn, jo excuse me, Josephine, about how to plug in and uh, volunteer for us. And then obviously David and the Peace Poets about uh, the art and the music that's going to uh, come throughout the course of the day. So we're eager for your questions. Um, we've got some that are posted in the chat right now, but if you have other questions about logistics, about uh, the, the event itself, about any of these other things, please put them in the chat and we'll respond to them as they come in. Um, we've got a couple here. Uh, the first is, um, that, uh, 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 sure, yeah, go for it. This is Vanessa from uh, 350.org who's gonna take uh, the questions and then please post, in the, post your questions in the chat. This is our last chance before we see you in 10 days to uh, get your questions answered. So Vanessa, go for it. Uh, so, so far we have a couple of questions. One is about, uh, has this been covered in the state and national news? People don't seem to know about it. And the answer is yes. We had a big, very successful uh, press conference here uh, one month out on August 8th. And uh, there has, is, we do have a team of press people that are pushing it out. And actually we got, I don't know if you have the front page handy, but we got on the front page of um, the local uh, East Bay newspaper here. And I expect you will be hearing a lot more in the next week. Um, you know, news cycles are 
anything that doesn't have a hook like it's happening tomorrow doesn't make it in, into the news as fast. But uh, I think over the next week, you should be hearing a lot more. But tell your press, if you're in a city and you're sending a delegation, let your local press know that you're going. Um, and if you need to be put in contact with our communications and media team, uh, reach out to us. Uh, when I'm done talking, we'll have a slide up. It's contact.ca at riseforclimate.org. Um, you can send us a request and we'll put you in touch with our comms media people because yes, absolutely, we are promoting this up the wazoo. Um, and we had another question about bus pickup times. Um, this was in response to Jack talking about bus pickups. Pickups will be, as I understand it, and Jack, please tell me if this is wrong, but uh, between 3.30 and 5.30 is when, Pete, when the buses, the window of time that the buses have for pickup. Is that right, Jack? Uh, that's what we're saying. I think you can kind of work it out with your own bus driver and your own crew as to how long people want to stay. Definitely stay past two because that's the big event. Um, if people feel anxious to leave, I mean, any time after 2.30, I guess, would be possible. But I think we're just saying 3.30 to 5.30 as a general guideline. So whatever you've told your bus driver, I think that was someone who said that they were planning on leaving at three, that's still fine. Um, and uh, you can reach out to, to us if you have more questions. Actually, the best person to reach out to with that question is the buses um, earlier. There should have been a slide. We're gonna, we're gonna make the slide deck and this whole re um, recording available afterwards. So you can go back and if you didn't take notes on everything, you can go back and look at it. But we have a, a bus captain's dedicated channel where you can email us and we will get back to you with specific answers. Um, la, let's see, what is the Planet Justice email address about street mural volunteering? Uh, I think if you want to volunteer with, uh, with the, the arts team or the, uh, the day of team, you can go to the website um, ca.riseforclimate.org slash volunteer and uh, sign up on there and then you'll uh, get integrated in our system and then uh, Josephine and the rest of the team will reach out to plug you in uh, to, to, to volunteer. And Brian, if that, if that doesn't answer your question, uh, feel free to put another one in the chat there, but rise for uh, the ca.riseforclimate.org slash volunteer and you can find the way that volunteer that way. Um, all right, next question. Uh, when we get off the charter bus, do we walk to the Embarcadero Center to line up for the march? Yes, please. Also, will there be printed forms of the song you are singing for those gathered? Just curious how so many people will be able to learn it so quickly and all sing together. That is a great question. Um, and I was actually thinking that same thing. Those lyrics are all now available on the website. You can download them yourself. If I would encourage those of you who are on this call who have a bus, if you could download them ahead of time. Um, I'm blanking on where on the website it is. Can anyone who's on another? Um, where uh, we'll, we'll send it out no. when you uh, with with the recording. But I think Lou is also Lou and the uh, oh, Peace Poets are also leading a training yes. tomorrow night for uh, uh, Lou. I don't know if Peace Poets, if you want to speak briefly to oh, how yeah. we're going to make sure that the song is integrated into the whole march. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, thanks so much for that question. So, uh, two things. One is that we have this uh, training tomorrow night, so that there's song leaders throughout the march and throughout the area who will be ready to guide folks in singing. We prefer um, do, to not have uh, the physical copies in the street, but uh, instead, uh, you know, with, with the pieces of paper, uh, instead, we hope that we'll send the link where we have video to be able to teach you all uh, the song before that you can again, uh, share with your folks who are coming as well as use on the bus to sing some songs together and tomorrow night we're really excited to have this this training just in case anyone is in the area uh 6 30 to 9 p.m at 350.org in oakland uh and yeah we're waiting for you it's gonna be fun great Thank you so much, Lou. And as you see, Vanessa just put in the chat, uh, rise for ca.riseforclimate.org slash arts slash music, where you can find the lyrics to the song and a forthcoming music video with that song that uh, is really going to, um, uh, you can take that to folks on your bus, show that to folks in your community, and that'll uh, be one way to teach the song throughout. So 
Go to the next. Uh, and will the interfaith service at 915 before the march include an indigenous opening ceremony or is that located at a different place in time? There is an indigenous sunrise ceremony happening at sunrise. Um, it's not being widely publicized. It's really sort of for the indigenous community. I think if you want specific information and you're interested in joining that though, uh, reach out to us and we can connect you with those organizers and they can tell you where it's going to be somewhere nearby I think at the water, but I'm not sure exactly where I know it's at sunrise mm -hmm. And, uh, and there will be uh, somebody else from uh, to open the interfaith uh, um, uh, Service there will be an indigenous person there to, to welcome folks to, from multiple faiths to, uh, to uh, At the beginning of that service too. Oh great. And then the War women warrior song will also be after the the rise moment as the march starts, then they will also be leading with song as they march. So there will be <laughs> lots of spirituality from our indigenous friends. Um, let's see. Uh, letting the bus people know about the lyrics. Could the bus organizers send it all to the people who have signed up for all of the buses? Yes, that's a great idea. And also um, just send them that link because then they'll have everything they need. Um, I'm, we may, I'm going to be one of the greeters and, and we may be handing out small sheets, depend, we haven't yet figured out exactly, we may also be giving people information about how to um, RSVP to the march if they didn't RSVP in advance, so we have some sense of numbers and who's been at the march, so if we end up doing that, we'll put lyrics on the back to be determined, but um, for now, yeah, it's not hard, you can learn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's <Exactly>. catchy. <laughs> it's, great. it's still ringing in my ears. So. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you, everybody. And a big thanks to Adelita and to Juan uh, for telling their stories and representing different parts of California. To Jack for walking us through the nuts and the bolts and the peace boats and David for bringing some uh, soul and art and energy. And thank you to all of you for uh, joining us tonight and also for joining us in uh, the streets uh, 10 days from today. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out contact at CEA at riseforclimate.org and we'll get back to you right away. And uh, um, there's the, uh, you can see it on your screen now, contact.ca at riseforclimate.org. And uh, we'll respond to logistics questions, questions about the music, questions about your buses, et cetera. And uh, so don't be shy. Uh, the time is now. Really encourage you folks to reach out uh, to your friends and neighbors and fill those extra spots in those buses. Uh, fill, go, fill up the carpools. There are carpool links on the website um, and RSVP for the march. And uh, let the world know that uh, we we need a different future, and, uh, and that starts on September 8th. So, uh, thank you all for your time. Um, uh, someone's posting in the chats here. Is there a way to be in touch with the Peace Poets? Uh, just one last question before we go. Frankie and Lou, do you want to uh, shout out your website? Looks like they're typing in right now. Um, so again, big thanks to everybody uh, for uh, coming uh, to join us tonight. This will be recorded and you'll get something, uh, get a response to the PRSVP for this. You'll get the recording as well as uh, links to uh, some of the resources that we talked about. And it, uh, all of the questions, uh, almost all the questions can be answered from the website. So do some digging around there, but don't be shy. Reach out to contact at CA at uh, riseforclimate.org and we can get your questions answered there. Sign up to volunteer, uh, go to uh, the website slash volunteer and help us bring thousands of people into the streets for the largest climate mobilization in West Coast history uh, 10 days from today. So you can see the Peace Boats information on the website, uh, uh, in the chat there, um, thepeaceboats.com. Um, thank you all. We're gonna sign off now and, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you in 10 days.